Welcome to the Craig and Greg Show, presented by Maximize Leadership. Now, here are Craig Owens and Greg Harris. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Craig and Greg Show. I'm Craig. This is Greg. You know, underlying almost every topic that we talk about is an element of making a change in your leadership. We're hopefully challenging you not to just stay as you were, but to move forward a little bit. But Greg, it it, uh, dawned on me as I was thinking about some things for us to talk about that for some people, I think change is... uh, somewhat like a four letter word that they just want to avoid it. So I, I, today I want us to talk about becoming the change catalyst in your organization. But I think before we do that, we need to help people get over the fact that change is actually a good thing. Right. Well, I think maybe in their past change wasn't, Uh Uh, could be personal, you know, mom and dad didn't make it or grandma who stayed with us died or uh, went to the next school level and it wasn't as fun as the previous school. So I think they've maybe been conditioned uh, and we could do that to our, our associates, right? As, as leaders, sure. we can make change, you know, you know, required and no input. And they're like, well, that didn't help me at all. Um, but change is a four letter word for many. I've, I think if you went to the mental health world and said, hey, uh, change can be considered chaos Mm-hmm. Um, how many people come in and have anxiety over the change? Oh. It's a- almost all cases. Yeah. And as leaders, we have to really be aware of that. Well, I, I think a lot of people, you know, you'll hear this cliche, um, the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. And they're really kind of assuming it's bad now, but it's also going to be bad if we change. But just because it's unknown, well, I'd rather stick with this thing. It's not good now, but at least I know what I've got. It's almost... Um, functionally dysfunctional, uh, that sort of thing. So I know as we were sharing some notes, um, you had shared with me a couple of ideas. I don't know if you want to go through a couple of the bullet points of what what holds people back from from wanting to make those changes. Well, I think you're, uh, what, what they know is what they've maybe talked themselves into. This is normal. This is acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, but change is acceptable too particularly when we look at things throughout history, how they've gotten better, right? You know, um, you know, horse and buggy. Now we have fast trains or it, it, but it, it took a lot and, and to move people is not easy. Right. I think change, there's a fear, um, fear of the unknown fear of, you know, like I'm giving up something and I don't know if it'll be better on the other side. Right which in a, in a previous episode, we talked about leaders having vision and sharing it, mm-hmm. uh, the why. So to change, like, well, let's, let's modify how we deliver this service to our clients. Well, I kind of like the way we were doing it, right. but clients are asking for it. And, and that's a silly example, but it is one where, you know, a, a service industry has to update or the clients are going to go someplace where it's better. Yep. You know. Or, or even if the clients aren't asking for it yet, but you say, "But I'm looking at the horizon, and I know we're going to need to make this change." And then people are like, "Wait a minute, you know," and yeah. and you can see them grab a hold, like you're not moving me from this thing because that that could be so scary of what's going to happen. But but honestly, I mean, what do you think is going to? And I think this is why you have to address it with people. All right, if we try this and it doesn't work. What do you think is going to happen? You think it's all going to fall on you? You're going to lose your job maybe. because of that? I, maybe that's the fear, yeah. fear of repercussions of uh, unsuccessful change. Maybe. Um, there's a cool book titled um, Who Moved My Cheese? Oh, yeah. And that's a lot of what, you know, associates and teammates are worried about. Like, well, that, I'm so used to doing this. I've been doing this for three months. Well, what if someone who's been here for 30 years? I think change has two possibilities. It's very onerous or there's an opportunity. Yep. And we might, as leaders, have to assess ourselves. Are we half empty glass on change is onerous? We gotta do it. Or is it change as an opportunity to become even a better organization or a better person, better version of you? Sure. And I think as leaders, we if we're unwilling to change, certainly our team will. What, what, what do you think about where um, pride comes into it, where a leader says, I don't want to change something because I had the good idea and I don't want to go with somebody else's idea because maybe their idea is better than mine. Is that 
that, that comes into play a lot, unfortunately, particularly if, if it's a, a management team or a leadership team and someone's making suggestions that's not their division, very easy. Very easy to say, well, your, your, your team, yeah. you should do this different. You your know. department. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. Don't that's mess it. with mine. <laughs> well, mine, mine's sacred. Right. Uh, I think that's one thing I think about change when I've been a part of a number of organizations where uh, change was inevitable, right? It's going to happen. We're going to either sure. jump in the water and go or we're going to get, you know, stuck on the sidelines and on the in embankment of the, of the river. And, uh, and I think with people, they need to be encouraged that it's okay to try and not everything that we try will work, but we have to try new things because that's how we become relevant and yes. attractive to the marketplace. Absolutely. Yep. Um, the um, In order to make the change, it's not uh, – I, I was asked once, I remember when um, uh, I was sitting around with a group of my leaders and – uh, somebody said, Hey, can I just start off with just kind of a fun exercise today? And I said, sure. And she wanted to ask everybody if you could have some kind of superpower, what would you have? And I still remember what I said. It was a, a number of years ago, but I said, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to have that kind of that magic powder where if we were going to make a change, we're going to do something different where I could just go poof and people would get it. They'd go, Oh yeah. And they just immediately, you know, buy in and they have it. Um, unfortunately that doesn't exist. I don't have that power, but so it's the same thing when we're going to make a change, we can't just go to our people and just go poof, here's the change and expect everybody to get it. And that's the reason why, um, I know you uh, talk a lot about there being a change catalyst. Yeah. There, there has to be something that the catalyst starts the process. And a lot of times the catalyst, I know in like chemical, uh, terminology, you don't really notice it at first. The catalyst starts doing something and it takes a while before the change starts coming about. So let's, let's, let's talk about once you've got the team to the spot, we're like, okay, we need to make a change. What kind of catalyst do we need to be looking at in our changes? Well, I think as we've talked about leaders, our audience, you know, is there's tremendous people that follow us and watch and feed, give us good feedback, but they're daring leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, do nothing leaders, you know, generally change just really uh, intimidates them, you know, because it's it's new territory that they've, and they may not be the leader then. I mean, in terms of perception, what I like about some firms that have like research and design, that's the place where they are they try. So that you know they're they're researching, they're designing things, and how many times does one design not work? They scrap it and try again. Mm -hmm. I think we need that in leadership because sometimes the soft tissue of an organization is, well, this is my form. I have to fill this form in and, uh, and then I, I, don't, I don't really know what they do with it. So what's the intention of that form? Well, we get rid of all forms. Well, but, but I kind of liked writing down my venting and feelings, you know? Right. So it's like almost they're not happy no matter what. What I have found and it wasn't easy, is you need to find people who are willing to say, it, there's no sacred cows. I mean, there are principles of an organization sure. you yeah. don't change. Right. But there's no sacred cows in terms of protocol or procedures or maybe even properties like, well, well let's try this. So I think finding those folks, leader finding catalyst change agents, I like, you know, like um, secret spies in the, in the organization, they can recruit other people that maybe we don't have access to because of our position or it's not our department or it's not even our site or a city. Right. So I really like the, we're, we're looking at a change committee and I've, mm -hmm. we've actually done that a couple of times and I'm surprised you think, so that, I wouldn't have guessed she wanted to be on this one, but Clearly, she's wired for change. And I, but I think change can be terminology twisted to be improvement, which I like. Sure. So this I, is sort like of the that, improvement yeah. committee. Right. You know, we're always just checking things, always questioning things. You know, what, is there a better mouse trap? Yeah. Um, but you've, you've done some amazing things with change. And what I think was fascinating, Craig, is the light goes on when they know, so we're going to face change. All right, I'll jump in the pool too. Right. And I think you get encouragement from people who are like, yeah, I really didn't want to, but now that we did it, I love it. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I think that we got to be very careful about not making change just to change. I mean, I think everybody probably has experienced 
um, you know, you, you open up your favorite app on your phone and you go to press where you've pressed before and you're like, wait, it's not there anymore. Why did they change this? Gosh. And, and they just like, well, we're just going to give it a facelift. What does it do differently? Well, it still does the exact same thing. We just changed the layout. Well, why? Yeah. I, I mean, I, why would you just change? So it's almost like going back to your analogy before, not using this form. Now we're using this form. Why? Well, I don't know. We just wanted to have a different form. Does it do something? No, it's just, it, you know, it's just a change. So I think we got to be very careful about that. So I like your word of saying this is an improvement committee. So if we're, if we are going to change this form, if we are going to change this app, it's because it has improved something, right. not just changed it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the unselfishness of leadership and the unselfishness of, of our teams, mm -hmm. um, sometimes change will put more on us, but it might have been for the customer. Is, that's why we're in business. We're really not in business for our paycheck. You know, right. we're, and we have a paycheck because of the customer or the product or solution we provide. And I do think the improvement kind of changes it a bit from, yeah. you know, change. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I'm up for that. I'm, I'm pretty long in the teeth now. I'm, I've been here a long time. Right. I have found some of the folks that have the most experience relish the change because it gave them a little something new. Sure. You know, versus... Yep, I could do my job. Yeah, I, I know where my number two pencil is. Yeah, I, do, I go with my eyes closed. Yeah. So this is where I power up my. Com I mean, they just know by rote. Yeah. Autopilot. Autopilot. Right. And so you know, we had a um, episode a while back on a quiet quitting, and I think change really engages or actually shows yeah. if a person's going to be a change agent or a catalyst. And I think patience is probably something I've learned, Craig. Mm with change is you'd, you'd really want to say, Hey, we've gotten together. Our improvement team is talking about this. Our customers are saying this, our vendors are saying this. We're, and then you got, well, yeah, 37% still aren't on board. See, and that's, and that's why my impatience wanting to go poof and just have people get it. You know, that's where my impatience comes in. Um, let me ask you a question about in your experience before, when you are going to put together an improvement committee or improvement team, and um, you're you're looking for change catalysts that are going to help you through the organization. Are those people that you are going to recruit versus are those people that you're going to say, okay, show of hands, who wants to be on this team? What what has been your experience? Is it or maybe it's not either or, maybe it's a both and. But but how have you put together those teams before? I have never asked publicly who wants to be on the team because I've learned the hard way. They want to be on it so they don't change anything. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's too drastic. Yeah. Well, that, that actually was some of our leadership team's number one priority. Holy smokes, now what? Yeah. Um, I, it's it's going to be a little corny. So uh, I think when I we walk around a group and so let's say you've got 50 employees or more, um, oh, they changed their hairstyle they're on the committee. Hmm. Um, they chose a different vehicle or different wardrobe or they changed their office, like decorate it for certain holidays or so. Oh, so they're open to it. Yes. It, it sounds corny. Uh, there are others where you're like attitudinally like, hey, we had that sales meeting and you had a couple good ideas. Pfft, you're on that committee. Yeah. You know, you thought outside the box. Uh, but I, I do think it's not unilateral, like, hey, anybody interested? Because I have found them to be the ones to guard, you know, the, the old sacred rules. Sure. And, uh, uh, and potentially, I would say, in getting a committee, I don't mind a big one. My grandpa, you know, had a funny quote, you know, the goal of a committee was a horse, you end up with a donkey. Um, but you do need to be a little choosy. But, you know, different generations, different departments, uh, different cultures, ethnicity, experiences. Yeah. I, I think you need a good blend because they become the agents in those subcultures within your company. Yep. Yep. Well, I, I've and I've often talked about before, I like, like that bringing in that diversity. I, I've uh, used the analogy before, like I'll just I use this uh, Mountain Dew can that, you know, f sitting where I'm sitting 
I have one perspective of this can. I can imagine what's over here on the other side, or maybe I remember seeing that side, but I, I don't see it as clearly right now because I, I see, see it from my perspective, my department, my mm -hmm. area of expertise. And when you get multi-generational, multi-departments, multi-talents in there, everybody sees this, and then together we have filled it in. And that's a part of when the leader says, let me cast the vision here. When somebody over here see something that might be in my blind spot and says, Hey, um, hold on a second. If we make this change, do you realize that this is going to change over here? Oh no. Thanks for bringing that up. I wouldn't have seen that before. And that's a part of like the pride. I got to check my ego at the door because I had a great idea for this. That doesn't mean that I necessarily see all of the parts. And right. so I've got to involve the other people. I have seen horrible rollouts of change mm. in corporate America. Yeah some person in a corner office in a faraway land. I'm being facetious, but sometimes it's that. We want all of our locations to do it this way now. No buy-in, no pre-communication, and it's just a fart in Sunday school. It doesn't work. Um, I think what you need to do is just let it out a little bit. So um, mergers and acquisitions intrigue me. Succession planning, you know, one of the things that my uh, Maximize Leadership does. And I love it when someone comes in, oh, Craig, <laughs> Nothing will change. We're just, we're, we're buying out the shares of the retiring person and nothing will change. And in 30 days, everything changes. You're like, what'd you buy the company for? Was it a bad company? Right. Well, I just like the power to change. And those go over like a fart in Sunday school too, because now you're the new owner, but you have no sniff who are the change catalysts. Mm -hmm. And you're forcing it on people. And then it's just, everyone puts their hands up and the, the transition of ownership goes really bad yep. or they leave and then you end up with a company less valued and you're still that, paying for it. That was just right, right. You know, that's the, we do, we have to check ourselves like sure. as leaders to say, I, I don't know why they do this this way and just take your time, yep. you know, but when you, it's clear, you really do need a, a team that says, Hey, we're, we're plowing a path. We're doing it differently. This is a really great idea. And you need those cheerleaders in the, uh, on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Not just, you know, the person in the corner office. Right. They're the catalysts that are helping you make the change. You, you, yeah. Because you can't, as the leader, you can't go into every department and make the change in every department, at every desk, at every... Those have to be the people that make the change. And what I found is that it's not so much that people are unwilling to make a change. Um, I think that they're more willing to make the change if they had a chance to... Um, weigh in on it uh, up front. Participate. Right. If if they just are sitting there, you know, one day they're on their computer and all of a sudden they're like, oh, here's an email from the boss and it says, this is what we're doing now. What? 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 How did they, they didn't think through, they didn't, you know. Right. But when they, well, but when they say, hey, I actually got to help craft the email, I ran a couple of the meetings in my department, uh, I'm in charge of training the three other people that are in my group on this change. I think people are much more willing to be that catalyst and, and help make that change for you. I think in change, the leader has to be truly honest and yes. transparent yep. and say, you know, change isn't very fun. We get it. But if we don't change, we won't exist the way we are our strength, our position in the marketplace, et cetera. Uh, and overcoming that fear of what was comfortable, I got used to this, is a tough one. Um, we have to almost cast that vision on on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will definitely be more efficient. Yep. Uh, it will connect us as departments better, whatever the sentences are, but you can't baloney them. No, and I think it is perfectly fine and probably um, very needed to say, this is going to be uncomfortable yes. when we make this change because change is always uncomfortable. We're going from like you were saying about before with my eyes closed. <laughs> I know where my pencil is. I can do all this stuff on autopilot and all of a sudden they're going, wait, where's my pencil? It's not right here. Yeah. And so now people have to start thinking about it. So tell them right up front, this is going to be uncomfortable, but on the other side, look what we're going to do. Well, and it's not a short change. We, we may, maybe elongate the change process. And we've learned, you know, maybe a few of the wise guys thought it was going to be this way, but then someone came up with a cool idea and we short circuited that and it, it didn't have to go that long or right. 
that was what we thought it would end up being, but that's the fun part about change. Yes. So you use water as an example. You, you put your hose out in your yard and just let it run for a while. It'll find a way. Yep. Oh, that's, I didn't know it was going to go that way. But just being open to change is, um, it's freeing for some, but it's, it's paralyzing for others. Yes. We have to really bring them along. We used one uh, interesting survey. We had a nice committee for improvement. And then uh, we decided to survey the rest of the group and then gave them an update. And we really shared, boy, it, I mean, it was, there were battles, contentious, it was tough. You know, some people left, some people cried, you know, but we, we stuck in there because in the end, we want this organization to have a legacy. Yes. And then we shared the survey and, and, and asked them for feedback. Most of them were like, oh, oh, you've thought about all that. And there was some sense of reassurance that it wasn't, you know, uh, some, you know, female CEO in the corner who, you know, was in a different city or some onerous, you know, process guy in the corner office. And he was, you know, telling you, oh, we're going to do it this way, whether you like it or not. Mm, that's not very good buy-in. Right. But the survey really let people know, oh, you thought it through. Yep. Oh, my department was represented, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, without writing a narrative, you know, you can communicate that you were thoughtful. And I think that's what they need to know as us leaders. It's a cool quote uh, from Dennis Waitley, yeah. change the unchangeable, accept the unchangeable, because there'll be times where you try to change it and it doesn't, and then remove yourself from the unacceptable. And I think as leaders, what it could be unacceptable and change is not changing. Yeah. Because we, we want to be in the forefront we want to be a trailblazer. Um, settling was another subject in a prior episode of, you know, just settling in at work. Right. Uh, as a leader, we can't settle. Um, oh. And the next generations want us to be those ex that explorer, yeah. you know, that's, that let's search for new ways. And I think Dennis's quote is really good. It's at some point, I, I know change is hard, but we have to communicate that uh, and, and give them that empathy. You know, one of the, um, things that I did in leading a pretty major change in an organization was um, I went to Jim Collins' book, mm -hmm. Good to Great, mm -hmm. because he does talk in there about organizations that had to go through this type of, of change and then come out um, excelling on the other side. And I walked through that with, with my team and said, so let's apply some of these principles. Where, where do you see these things in our own organization? And um, it was it was kind of like, I don't, I don't know if you've ever had this before, like maybe, you know, with your kids, you're trying to tell them something and it doesn't seem to really be connecting. And then there's a coach or a teacher that tells them the exact same thing. And all of a sudden they go, oh, yeah. I, I think that sometimes I, I kind of got that feeling going with my team. Um, oh, well, Jim Collins wrote this in his book. Now, some of these principles of what I've been saying for a while, but okay, you're reading it from somebody else. Good. And then they, but then even the process of working through the book and working through those principles, they were like, yeah, I feel like, you know, we've really thought this through. And then they became just the incredible catalyst for the change in the organization. I wish that we could as leaders, you know, use a little powder, a little pixie dust to let them see what it would be like. And it won't be that bad. I think you would have such cooperation, yep. um, but change hasn't always gone well for people. So we're as leaders having to play, okay, so you've had some bad change experiences. Uh, I'm going to have to convince all of us that this is mm -hmm. not a waste of time. Right. Um, I think, you know, maybe just a couple of things on the benefits of change. And I think that's what people need to see that vision of what could we be? You right. know, this is what we are today. Yeah. But what? And so that curiosity, I think we really have to foster as leaders, like let's, let's create this environment of curiosity. So yep. one of the things that one of the benefits I think, so, you know, you're, you've got a hundred people, but they still have their job. They still have their division. They have their function. They have their contribution to profitability or delivery to a customer is personal growth and new year's resolutions, hmm. you know, maybe I don't know if the stats are right, Craig, but let's say 95% of people that do a New Year's resolution within 21 days, they stop. Yep. So what, what change wasn't worth it, I guess, right. you know, or they didn't have enough reason behind sticking with it, but they didn't give them a chance to see 
on the other end? What would it feel like to not, you know, have alcohol? What would it feel like to exercise five times a week? What would it mean to have a better night's sleep? Mm -hmm. uh, what would it be to, hey, I'm going to recommit myself and go to church again, or what those changes were, if they're not costly, and I think they need to see that. Mm -hmm. So personal growth, it, that's really where change starts, you know. Sure. Um, so each person, if they change, becomes a way stronger team yep. and then that's a stronger division and so forth and so on. I think the other one is improvements, which I, I like that word and maybe you all can steal it when you, uh, in, you know, roll out, we're going to make some changes. Improvements is less threatening. Yeah, I think so too. You know, I like that. Um, but it, but it's, it's change. It's just, we're, we're going to improve. You didn't change for the Right. Worst. Nobody's going to say we're 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 making a change to go backwards. Right. So right. you know we have to kind of embrace the word improvement, and yep. um, so people like that committee. Like I, I, I'm I'm on the committee for improvement, right. versus I'm on the uh, social committee. I don't even know why we do this, but so the improvements like, oh, so this is like the next one to five years could really be affected by what we did on this committee. Yep. That's pretty good honor. Yep. Um, I think. Creativity, curiosity, unleashing that is really, really big because uh, change is like, so uh, if our customer is saying this, how could we wow them again? Yes. I think they've kind of settled into, yeah, you know, Greg does it this way. He brings it every 12 months. He stops by every six months. He sends me a text every three months. You know, that's a, if we wowed them with something different, what would, what would wow them? And that creativity really draws that committee in like, sure. ooh, that'd be yep. a great way to improve our touch points with a customer, you know. And I think lastly, it's a snowball effect. If we as leaders are willing to say, you know, I, I really am not married to this process or these rules or this protocol, and they're like, you're not? No, I, I really don't even like enforcing them when you don't do them, right. I mean, if that was the honest thing. So I think with leaders, it's, we're, we're sort of the snowball, but also the catalyst change agents inside, like their teams, because uh, we're not there. We're not, no. we're not everywhere. We can't so be. those are the four things. Yeah. I think that benefit, change, or improvement, um, the improvement could be for other people, which is often why we do those. Right. Yeah, yeah hopefully it will be. Well, listen, let, let us help you out here. If you um, know, if you're kind of feeling, I need some uh, improvement in my organization, or maybe you've tried it before and it just didn't go very well, and so you're a little gun-shy about trying it again, why don't you consider uh, talking to us about coaching you through this process? So if you go to MaximizeLeadership.com, there is a page on there about our coaching huddles. You can fill out some information in there. There's no obligation. Just fill it out in there and tell us, hey, uh, I'm thinking about making some improvements. Um, I'm a little gun shy because it didn't go well before. Or maybe you're saying, I don't even know where to start on this thing. Just fill that out. And then one of us is going to get in touch with you. We're going to have a brief conversation. We'll talk to you a little bit. And then we can honestly tell you, here's what we think that we could do coaching you through this. Or we could say, you know what, here's somebody else that you could talk to. We'll, we'll be very honest with you on that. But if we can help coach you through these improvement processes, being a change catalyst in your organization, we would love to be able to do that. So MaximizeLeadership.com, click on the, uh, the link for the coaching huddles and give us some uh, contact info for you, and we'll be back in touch with you. You can also reach out to us through Maximize Podcast on Twitter, or even just comment below on this video if you've got some feedback for us, or maybe you've got a suggestion, hey, I'd really like you guys to talk about this topic. We'd love to bring that up in the next episode. If you haven't already on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. We uh, have these big episodes that come out a couple of times a month, but we also have some other things that show up quite a bit. Greg's got a great segment called the Maximize Minute, and we have some other shorts and we want you to be able to get all of that information. So if you subscribe and click the bell, you'll get notified every time something new drops. Stay tuned. We got lots of great content that's coming for you soon. Get in touch with Craig and Greg through Twitter at Maximize Podcast or at MaximizeLeadership.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of the Craig and Greg Show.